We're showing a mission that takes place in Acre, or Acre, if you want to say it with a French accent. Um, this is the city that was taken over by Richard the Lionheart right before our game takes place, during the year 1191. And the, your mission is to assassinate William de Montferrat, who's a, a bad guy who is plotting to take over the city and kind of do a little coup against Richard while he's off leading the troops on the battlefield. The cities are actually based on the real historic plans that we found. So we worked with four different historians to develop them. Um, one of the things that's different is obviously the population. Acre, since it was taken over by uh, the Europeans, right, uh, with Richard the Lionheart, is 90% Europeans in the city. And you're going to see the traditional dress that was worn by the, the Europeans in medieval times. Um, and of course, the architecture. You're going to see a lot of burnt buildings because there's recently a siege and big battles. Um, you're going to uh, have a lot of gameplay related to that because the challenges of free running on the broken buildings and the obstacles are a little bit different. Um, you're also going to have more guards in that city. It's heavily guarded because, uh, because of the recent battles and Richard's presence. Jerusalem is a very diverse city and it's filled with a lot of markets. Um, there's also a lot of the buildings that people would recognize, um, famous buildings that, are his that have historical significance. And there you're going to see different population, uh, different languages spoken. Uh, Damascus, which is the third big city, is the city that was never overtaken by the Crusaders. So that's 100% uh, Saracen people, uh, that traditional form of dress, the different types of uh, set buildings that you'd see with big minarets and stuff, uh, different kinds of climbing challenges in there and different population. The first thing you may want to do when you enter a city is climb up to the top of Viewpoint, which is any high building that gives you a view of the city. This is the way you start your reconnaissance, kind of getting to know the lay of the new area that you've gone into. Um, and when you climb up to the top, it's going to then, you know, Altair gets to look around and you locate all of the guards in the area, it clears the map, it shows you hide spots in the area, and it also pinpoints any objectives that may be there. So optional objectives like missions that you may want to do to help the population and also missions that will help you towards your assassination. So for example, with Richard the Lionheart, um, which, <laughs> he's not the one you want to assassinate actually, with William de Montferrat, um, you don't really know where he's located, you don't really know how to get into this fortress once you do find out it's heavily armed, and by eavesdropping on certain people or uh, pickpocketing certain information or beating people up, you're going to be able to find out the information that you need to complete your mission. So it all starts with scoping out the land and getting your viewpoints, and then that reveals where all of the clues are to help you get your job done. The number of viewpoints is a little bit organic. It's actually based on the plan and the layout of the city. We wanted to make logical sense. We didn't want to say, okay, we need 10 viewpoints in each city and so we're going to pretend that that small building is a viewpoint. We actually built up these cities based on the historic documents, the plans from the around the Third Crusade, and uh, the viewpoints are the actual tall buildings, the landmarks that you did find there. So you're going to easily recognize them when you're walking around. Anything that you look up at and it's large, um, that's a viewpoint. And there could be anywhere between, um, I think, in each district there's probably about 12, So, uh, and each city has three districts. So I'd say there's probably around 35 in a city. Um, and you don't need to climb up to the top of them. It's one of those things that uh, gives you some extra bonuses and uh, besides showing you the map, you can do as many as you want or as many as you don't want, depends on the type of gamer you are. I'm pretty sure there is that. <laughs> When you start out the game, you're a master assassin, you have all of your equipment, but of course as a player, um, you aren't really used to all of the abilities that Altair has at his disposal. And then story-wise, you get stripped of your rank and you spend the rest of the game trying to win back your honor with the assassins and also stop the Third Crusade, which is really the most important thing. Um, and as you kind of prove yourself mission by mission, some of your, your rank and your equipment gets restored to you. So a few of the things that you're gonna get is different weapons. Of course, that's very important for an assassin. So you get upgrades in your sword, more powerful swords. You get throwing knives, um, and then you get different pouches that allow you to carry more of those throwing knives. Throwing knives are incredibly useful. Um, you see that especially in the mission that we're showing here at Tokyo Game Show. It's a heavily guarded fortress, um, and you wanna be able to 
sneak in unseen. The throwing knives are your long range weapon and it's one hit, one kill. And so what, they allow you to kind of sneak up on the rooftops and take the sentinels and archers out before they discover you. Um, you also get later on in the game some gloves that let you grab back onto edges, reach a little bit further. If for example, you've been hit in the back by an arrow, you may lose your grip these gloves allow you to grip back on. If you're jumping towards a building, once you get them, you can reach and get a little bit further and hang on to buildings that you wouldn't necessarily have been able to before. The other thing you can do is if you want to descend a building really quickly and there isn't a bale of hay to jump into, you can let go and grab back on. So they're really, they change the feeling of free running and the types of moves that you can do. So you want to adopt your strategy once you, once you get those. Another thing we're showing for the first time at Tokyo Game Show here is um, a tackle move. That's another thing that you get later on is it comes with the belt. It's the the ability to tackle people in your way and that's really great when you're being chased because instead of stumbling over and falling over you knock the people in your way out of your way and then they become obstacles for the guys who are chasing you.